In Florida, water means many things to many people, a source of recreation, a necessity for agribusiness, and the means to sustain life on the peninsula. Too much or too little can spell disaster for thousands. In July 2002, I listened as a group of Florida poets explored their feelings about water. Water has always been the defining characteristic of Florida. It's defined our politics, it's defined our history, it's defined our development, it's defined our lives. And I think in much the same way, it defines our literature. Morris O'Sullivan is professor of English at Rollins College in Winter Park. It seems to be a primal need of writers, as it is of most of us. And when they write, they focus on those primal needs. And water offers all that wonderful opportunity for symbolism and imagery and also the potential for ambivalence. A scarcity of water inspired Angel of Drought by Tampa poet Gianna Russo when a nearby lake dried up two years ago. It's a very social sort of place for people in the neighborhood and to see it die was very sad. So I wanted to capture that along with all of the other background terror of drought, what that means, the implications of not having water, not having life. Something with an August thirst has drawn up the Hillsboro as if through a straw. A tawny tannic trickle inches the empty riverbed. The cattails have gone brown and brittle. The lily pads under some dark spell are reduced to the size of dimes. Something with the drive of life force in reverse has stolen away our lake. Last night, street dogs claimed each shore and ran far as I might skip a stone before their feet touched mud. And I can walk across the mud, but for rank puddles where frantic fish swim and wood stork and spoonbill trail them like desperate refugees, nature trots out such omens. Something with an itch for withered buds and shriveled grass some nemesis of typhoons, enemy of hurricanes. Every day, its draining touch draws closer to my door. Water is both very promising, nourishing, comforting, but it's also punishing, and it incorporates a lot of the fears and hopes that we have. O'Sullivan says he's always been surprised by how pervasive water images have been in Florida literature. There is probably nothing that's been written about Florida that doesn't touch on water in some way. Poetry, prose, fiction. St. Petersburg poet Peter Meinke wrote The Death of the Pilot Whales shortly after he came to Florida in 1966. Every few years down at the Florida Keys, where bones chew the water like mad dogs and spit it bubbling out on yellow sand, the sea darkens, and we crane toward the skies, toward the airplanes casting their shadows. But there are no planes, and those dark shadows are not shadows, but mark the silent forms of pilot whales charging the shore, like wild buffalo charging a train, driving toward reef and sand till the foam sprays red below the rainbow, stretching from sea to land. The fierceness of it all, unstoppable. Those broad flukes churning the water, that buried brain and heart set inflexibly on their last pulsing. The energy and beauty of all that flesh turning away from its cold, fathomless world. Like the negative of some huge lemming following God knows whose orders in a last ordered chaos of frantic obedience stronger than love. With what joy and trembling they hunch up the beach, shred themselves on shoals, what sexual shudders convulse them at that sweet moment when they reach at last what they have burned to meet. And we, who may be reminded of thoughts we wish not to think, we tow them back to sea, cut them open, and they sink. Miami and Jeffrey Philp describes his poem Meditation on Snake Creek as a comment on the span of human history in Florida and the natural world. Fog billows over the troubled face of the canal, a quilt of clouds torn by a stand of pines, a tangle of cumulus stuck in their needles, 
stretches over the hot road rising in the east to the reeb of mallards strutting over imaginary property lines of fulford by the sea neighbors with new silverware and noise down streets with names as provisional as the ones we give ourselves behind houses swollen as the frayed textbooks that line my shelves while overhead in the frigid wind from the west past hasidic women power walking checking each other's pulse as if they weren't going to live forever a kestrel circles rat snakes through the everglades sand skitters over the page into the next millennium a stream that quench ponce's thirst washed mud from the hair of the tkesta pours over my crown neck chest feet the hard portions and into the sap of the mangrove water itself alters so much that writers have been able to find everything in it they've found symbols they've found reflections of everything from the past to the future hope to despair possibility to inhibition in those waters i'm bill dudley with funding from the florida department of state division of cultural affairs this report was produced by the florida humanities council visit us on the web at flahum.org